is really exciting because we're very close to getting the final look we want. So we want to increase the magenta a little bit. We're going to have to rewind a little bit. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. This week, I would like to share my experience of chasing bluebells here in the UK, taking photos of them and making my first darkroom color print with one of the negatives. Let's go. Once a year for a few weeks, the bluebells are in full bloom here in the UK. The nature of the bluebells is such that they don't like change or being disturbed and the ancient woodlands where the ground has been undisturbed for decades, even centuries. That's where they usually pop up. So my plan is to uh, head to Alton where, uh, where I've booked an Airbnb so I took my uh, bike on a train to Norwich and then I'm biking to Alton and I know there are a couple of ancient woodlands there so I'm going to talk to the locals and kind of find out where the best spots are in those woodlands so I can make use of my time here and hopefully be able to capture some nice bluebells. I've just checked into my Airbnb here in Alton. It's uh, quarter past four. Don't really have much planned, to be honest. I'm gonna do a bit of location scouting because both the host and a local told me that there are plenty of bluebells next to a car park, an area called the Great Wood. Um, and so I'm just gonna go there, check it out, uh, so that in the morning I know kind of where I'm gonna go because the weather actually looks really promising for sunrise and so yeah i'm gonna have an early night so that i can be bright and early uh, chasing bluebells tomorrow So it's quarter past six and I've been out here for, I want to say a little over half an hour. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and take some close-up shots. Okay. 
last time. Eight thirty. Three, two, one. shot was actually uh, shoot in the dark because I had set up the shots to shoot something else and decided against it after I flicked the mirror lockup button I forgot that I did and, and I thought okay this won't work let's use the shot, shot elsewhere and then the mirror was up and I didn't know what the hell I was shooting, so... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was out of focus, so, you know. So that's why I was thinking I'll shoot this again. The same shot, but the light for the shot that I had lined up is gone, so... Might have to do something else. I'm loading Portra 160 at the moment. I haven't shot Portra 160 in 120 format in a long time. Alright, here we go. I didn't think I was gonna take another photo, but there's a really pretty scene here, and I would not want to miss it, so. Here goes shot number 13. I think it was a pretty decent morning. That's very British of me. <laughs> In terms of photography, it could be a hit or a miss. I wouldn't know until the shots are developed, but in terms of the whole experience, I think it was a spectacular morning. Like I, I was able to find like a quiet spot where there weren't many photographers because there's like four or five photographers all in one spot at any given moment so I'm glad I had my bike so I could ride out a bit further uh, because people can't walk the distance and get the light so but yeah I think I'm also gonna print one of those shots if <laughs> um, there's no if I think I'm gonna print one of the shots yeah I think I'm gonna head back to my Airbnb now and what time is it quarter past seven probably have some breakfast more coffee and rest a little bit and i don't know i haven't decided if i will shoot sunset we'll see depends how i feel but yeah i'm really pleased that i came out this morning and if nothing else just to be just to be in the nature 
It's nice. Anyway. As you saw in the video, I made the decision to print uh, after taking those photos. Uh, no big deal, except that I don't have any experience printing in the dark room. I've only ever set foot once in a dark room before. Uh, so as soon as I came back to London, I found a place where I could learn how to use the dark room, and that place is called Photofusion. They're based out of Brixton uh, here in London. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. I paid for uh, my training um, so this is my honest opinion they do offer a variety of different trainings uh, in different flavors like you can do day-long workshops with where there'll be a lot of attendees you can even do one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, and that's kind of what I did and I had a session with Paul in Photofusion he's uh, definitely an expert he knew what he was doing he's been a photographer for decades and he's been teaching for decades as well so I was in good hands. To run through the process itself you need two main things a an enlarger and a processor. So an enlarger is where you would uh, put your negatives in and it kind of projects it onto the photographic paper and once you've exposed it you then take it to the processor where you kind of load your paper into the processor in the dark and that develops the paper, uh, runs through a fix and then washes it and dries it for you and spits out the final print. And then you have two main variables, your exposure and your colors. And with color, obviously you have the color sliders. Uh, you've got the yellow and blue, magenta, um, green, red and cyan. And with this, we mainly worked with the yellow and magenta dials because once you can adjust those, you are taking care of the red uh, in the warmer side and cyan in the colder side anyway. So, um, so yeah, those are the variables. So to begin with, we did a test exposure. So we exposed a paper uh, in sort of different exposure times of four or five strips, that, as you can see here, and we left the color sliders in neutral 50 50 and took it to the processor got the print and, and then as we looked at the print we kind of thought okay the exposure is somewhere between two and three seconds so let's do two and a half seconds and that's what we did with the our first full exposure two and a half seconds and as soon as we saw that we knew that the picture was too warm and again this is subjective you might not think that it's too warm but based on what I was seeing at the time of taking the photo, I knew that the picture looked really warm because I wasn't even able to see the greens in the leaves. So we made a few adjustments to the yellow and the magenta sliders and or dials and <laughs> knobs. And then uh, we arrived at this final image and I'm definitely happy with it. Uh, I know I'll be going back because I can rent the dark rooms there for anywhere from four to six hours, which uh, it's pretty cool and it's relatively affordable so expect more darkroom printing videos on the channel as well but that's it for this week i hope you enjoyed it uh, take care and i'll see you in the next one bye